In this short video, I'll show how to characterize CAN bus arbitration using an Agilent InfiniVision 4000 X-Series oscilloscope with the CAN and LEN trigger and decode option. Let's get started. Here we show the scope triggering on and decoding an automotive differential CAN bus. I currently have my differential probe connected to the bus such that we can observe this bus in a dominant bit low format. In addition, I previously loaded a DBC file that defines this particular bus so that we can observe symbolic decoding of this bus. The scope is currently triggering on a message called brake torque, which is shown near the middle of the screen. Let's first talk about how we identify when arbitration occurs. But to understand how to identify arbitrated bits, Let's first take a look at the last bit in each frame, which is the acknowledgement bit. I've stopped repetitive acquisitions on the scope so that we can observe this waveform statically. The bit at the end of each frame is the acknowledgement bit. Near the end of each frame transmission, all other nodes in the CAN system will acknowledge if the just transmitted frame was valid. Notice that this bit has a lower dominant bit low level. This is because there are multiple nodes pulling down on the bus simultaneously, which causes more current to flow and drives the bus to a lower voltage level. This is normal and to be expected in a system that has more than two nodes. Let's now begin repetitive acquisitions again and look more closely at the beginning of one of these messages. The lower dominant bit low levels at the beginning of the message is evidence that arbitration is occurring. Multiple nodes in the system are beginning transmission of bits nearly simultaneously in an attempt to gain access to the bus and they are pulling the bus to a lower low level just like acknowledgement bits. Let's now observe a few single shot acquisitions. In this acquisition we can tell that there were at least three nodes attempting to communicate. We know this because we can see three distinct low levels. And in this acquisition, we can tell that there were probably just two nodes attempting to communicate since we see two distinct low levels. And finally, in this single shot acquisition, we can see that arbitration did not occur since we observed just one low level, which is the same low level as the rest of the frame. And here we show repetitive acquisitions again with random arbitration occurring. When arbitration occurs, there's a bitwise arbitration process that takes place that determines which frame has priority to continue transmitting the rest of the frame, which is the frame with the lowest ID. In this graphical example, node 2 has the lowest ID value and took full control of the bus beginning at transmission of bit number 4. In a multi-node CAN system, arbitration will randomly occur since all nodes transmit data asynchronously relative to each other. The frequency of occurrence of arbitration is dependent upon the number of nodes in the system and the total bus load. For the CAN bus we are currently monitoring, we can see that the bus load is approximately 24%, which is an acceptable level. The first step in characterizing how often arbitration occurs is to set up the scope to uniquely trigger on a particular message but only when arbitration occurs. We can do that using the scope's zone trigger capability. Setting up a zone trigger condition is as simple as drawing a zone box in the area of the arbitrating bits and then select must intersect. The scope is now uniquely triggering on message break torque, but only when arbitration occurs. Notice that we can no longer see the normal low levels near the beginning of this frame. To determine how often arbitration is happening during the transmission of this message, we can use the scope's segmented memory acquisition mode to capture multiple and consecutive occurrences of just frames with this trigger condition along with precise time tagging of each acquisition. I'll first turn on the scope's protocol lister. 
Then select the Acquire menu, segmented, and set it up to capture 100 consecutive occurrences of this trigger condition, then press Segmented to begin the acquisition. The scope has now completed the acquisition of 100 consecutive occurrences of message break torque, but only when arbitration occurred during this message. If I scroll to the last captured segment, we can see that it occurred approximately five seconds after the first captured segment. The scope can capture this much information without using extremely deep memory because it performs selective or filtered acquisitions. The time tags that you see in the first column of the protocol lister are currently showing the time of occurrence of each captured message relative to the first captured message. But we can also change it to show the time tag relative to the frame before it, so we get a delta time between frames. We can also view the waveform of each captured message individually by simply touching that message and then the waveform on screen relates to that particular listing in the protocol lister. To learn more about Agilent's InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes and how they can help you debug automotive designs faster, Contact your local Agilent authorized distributor and ask for a demonstration. Thank you.